Okay, so we're going to talk about Ozymandias first um, because it is uh, fairly simple once you break it all down. Okay, so there are two people, um, two speakers in this poem. There is this person that's saying, I, I met a traveler, and then there's the traveler. And the traveler says the rest of the poem. So um, he says, two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. What is he talking about? statue, right. Okay, so this is a statue. And then he says um, that, and he's still talking about the statue, it's half sunk, so sunk down into the sand. A shattered visage lies, okay, so it's crumbling. The, the statue itself is crumbling whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions red. When it says that its sculptor well those passions red, what does that tell us about the statue? It is like it was made by a sculptor who believed in what the statue was you know, representing. Close. It was it was made by a sculptor, but where did the sculptor get the idea for this statue? Yes, okay, so this is telling us probably the sculptor made the statue from an actual, like did not made it from a person, but like a person was uh, standing there and the sculptor was sculpting a statue of that real person. Okay, so the statue is of a real person. And then it comes down here and tells us there's a pedestal that the statue is standing on. And on the pedestal it says, My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look on my work, be mighty and despair. So we have a third speaker, okay? This is Ozymandias speaking, okay, through the words on the pedestal. And Ozymandias, what do we know about Ozymandias based on what he says here? What can we infer? He thought that he was a king of a great land. Okay. And he may have been king of a great land. Okay, what else do we know about him? He thought he was better than the other kings. Like, mm -hmm. okay. Um, so he, we could say he was prideful. Prideful, maybe greedy.
It's just this statue that's crumbling in the middle of sand. There, it, there are no mighty works, or uh, whatever he says, look on my works. There are no works to look on. Whatever it was that he built or created or ruled over is gone now. Yes. So it's like totally irony. It is. It is. It's, it is irony. Sorry, the I kind of ran into the R. And then, um, okay, so what are, get to the most important part here. I'm sorry, writing. Okay, the thematic ideas. You can just give me one word, uh, one word, um, abstract nouns that are ideas present in this poem? Anania? Greed, maybe? Because if he did amass a great kind of empire, he probably had a level of greed. Pride, Pride for sure. What else? Selfishness. Selfishness. Would power and crime be the same thing? No, not necessarily. Power is good. Because he was he did have power. He did have a lot of power. Um write about in your literary analysis paragraph, which next week we're going to talk about what a literary analysis paragraph looks like, <clears throat> practically speaking, like um, how you would organize a organize your paragraph. But if you are going to write this <coughs> along or write about this along with the giver, you could see how some of these thematic ideas overlap with the giver, um, uh, particularly power, something being forgotten or lost, um, pride. Uh, you think about um, how Ozymandias felt like he had created like a perfect empire and the um, Elders felt like they had created a perfect community, but it couldn't stand. And so you could see how you could draw similarities and differences um, regarding these things from both works, right? Okay, cool. All right, go ahead and end that video.